Welcome back everyone. Today we're on a little bit of a ride, checking out a full review test ride, I guess as you'd call it, on the Santa Cruz 5010. With rumors circulating of the new one launching any day now, I thought it'd be good to get over the new uh, latest release that is available, which is the Santa Cruz 5010 4. This one I'm riding is an S kit, so it's parted up with a SRAM GX shifting and nice rock shocks, dropper post, and some nice suspension all around. If you don't know the 5010, it's a fun bike. If you've seen the release video for this one, everything about it shouts fun, playful, goof around bike. Nothing says race winner, nothing says the fastest downhill or the fastest climber. This bike is designed to be easy to ride, enjoyable, and fun, and it probably checks off all those marks. If you are used to a fast bike, you may notice some downsides. Let's go for a ride and check it out. So we're out in the Brandon Hills again today. The trails are in great condition. On the 5010, you are stuck with both 27 and a half inch wheels. Now that is the circulating rumor to be changed. It rides really well. It is nimble and easy to turn. It handles superbly. Sometimes maybe too good compared to big long 29s, which we're all used to. It does feel a little bit twitchy. But when you're going around rocks and other obstacles, this thing just wants to bounce off them and get some air time. The best description I can feel is this feels like riding a BMX, just squishy and full suspension. It has powerful brakes, it has really good suspension on all part specs, even the R kit is well stocked. Carbon frame. As usual, Santa Cruz is sticking to only carbon for this year. Sounds like it might be something they're continuing ahead with. Honestly, the aluminum ones were not the best design in a way. It's hard to explain, but it's not like they cared too much about their aluminum. They built them, they made them, they worked well. They were definitely nothing they were proud of in a not blunt way, but they're obviously proud of their carbon manufacturing skills and high quality builds that they make. And it is felt this does feel like a really nice build quality. No matter what spec you get, even reserve wheels or not, Santa Cruz is hand building all of them. Everything is double checked and triple checked by guys in California. So you know each bike is thoroughly gone through as well as the shops which are putting it together. So the 5010 has a small 140 mil travel on the front and 130 mil travel on the back. That makes it pretty excellent, honestly, for most trails. Even some downhill stuff, you're gonna have no problem with that. It's gonna be able to tackle most things. Again, it's not the fastest downhill bike. You can tell two 27 and a half inch wheels especially comparing it to a Fuel EX, which I'm on now with 229s, it, it does feel a little slow. It does feel a little, I don't know how to explain it, like it lacks in top speed. Acceleration-wise, this thing ramps up to speed really quickly, but then it kind of stops at a point and you're like, oh, that's all we're doing, is it? Without putting out lots of effort. Not a downside, really. For control and handling and rideability, it's still a fast bike. I'm still keeping up with everyone. Could go faster. Not that big of a deal. It really only matters if you're starting to race or want to be honestly faster. Whether it's uphill or downhill, there are better options out there. For playfulness, though, this might be the lightest, most playful bike I've had. And although the frame and components aren't the lightest and physically with the VPP build suspension, it's definitely not the lightest bike on the market. The geometry is made to feel just super easy to ride and super easy to pull around and throw around. I thought this bike was going to be a little faster feeling, but at high speeds, it's very controllable. So it feels very confident inspiring All right. 
It's an interesting bike to ride. I've been liking it. I don't feel like I need that much more suspension travel. I feel like I'm That's used a to a 29, car. and maybe if they switched that 29 on the front, do a mullet like the Bronson, oh, no. it would just make it that much more capable of a bike. It's a little bit tricky to know, really. We're heading out to Gun Club Downhill. This is one of the fastest sections in the hills. It's a bit of a ride out there. You're almost eight to nine K one way. So you're a round trip of about 17, 18 kilometers, depending which ways you take. Overall, super fun trail though, really fast. It takes a bit of time and effort to get there. But when you get there, you cover probably half a kilometer in I don't know how long, pretty short amount of time. A couple little jumps on it, we'll get to those. This thing handled the smaller one great. I kind of chickened out on the first one. It just feels a little too poppy for me on this bike, so I was a little intimidated. The first one's a bit of a kicker, and I wasn't sure how this bike would handle that sort of jump, so I thought I'd skip the first one, and the second one went off no problem which is also a little kicker, but it's probably only, I don't know, a foot off the ground, maybe two feet max. It's pretty small compared to the first one. So I just decided to hold it out and go straight for the, it, here it is. Okay, so this is the first one, I skipped it. It's a pretty big one, nothing crazy, but it just didn't feel like, it doesn't shout confidence in a way in the jumps, just because of how poppy it is. I'm sure it's something I'll get used to. This second one though, really small. It went super smooth. I didn't even need to pop and I got about the same air as usual. Section so fast as you can tell. But with those 27 and a half, you can tell you're just being held back a little bit on the top speed. Gearing ratio, you could fix that, but rollability, it works well. It flies, it's a nice noisy hub to it. Santa Cruz is also well known for putting good hubs on their bikes with the s kit it is no surprise that is nice loud and very fast response time to all that dt swiss setup is really nice right, the dropper posts on it i find they always pair nicely this rock shocks one has been working very well i do like the firmness of the dropper post lever compared to cable ones this one is just got a good even push all the way through Whereas cables kind of have a softness and then it leads into a hardness. Obviously they're all a little bit different, but cable just has play and that's how it's always going to be. Whereas a hydraulic dropper post like this just tends to work well. Once you're down at the bottom of the hill, you do end in kind of this open field. And that's where the gun club is just to my left here. It is not in use anymore. Most of the time it's actually flooded because it just pools with water at the bottom. There's no drainage. It was really just a hole in the side of the wall, which people shot bullets at. As you're leaving, you come up a big climb. You take about five, 10 minutes to climb all the way up and you end up at this trail called Twisted Up. This first section here is getting so rooty and rocks and just, it's hard to keep speed. You want to go faster, but it's so rough. You kind of lose a little bit of control. Then you drop down here and you get this wide open weavy section, which is really easy to hardly pedal on. You can just roll everything, pump all the way through. Hopefully everyone likes Mike's pink shorts. Uh, he's pretty famous for those shorts. So he's probably proud that he's in this video. The 5010, I liked, it was an enjoyable bike. I don't know if I'd purchase it for me. Would I recommend it? Yes. To lots of new people, 110%. It's just that playful bike. Little jumps like that, technical, difficult sections seem very easy. Overall rideability, comfortable upright position, but still controllable over the downhill. It's fantastic that way. Just if you're looking to get fast trail speeds or really fly over downhills, ah, I just don't think it's the one. For new people and for people who are looking to jump, I think this is the bike for you. You will goof around in this. You look at Rat Boy Bryce. He uh, can do pretty much anything when he was riding this bike. It was pretty impressive. I'm not sure if he's still on the Santa Cruz team or not. 
but he used to be on the 5010 and he used to rip around and have a lot of fun on this. I don't have those skills. I don't have the places to ride with the jumps to do it. If I did, I think I'd buy it. But most of our trails are pretty flat rolling. Keep your speed in them so the climbs don't hurt, you know. And that's not exactly what this bike's for if you're being the fastest guy out there. I'm not saying I'm the fastest, but I'd like to keep a bit of a pace to me. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. It was just kind of a ride review of how I feel on the bike. It's light, it's nimble, without being the lightest bike on the planet. It just handles really well. And I think most people would enjoy this, except for races and the guys wanting to go the fastest. Great bike option. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see what's new in the next one. All right. Thanks, guys. Good luck.